Did you know that 63% of Americans have been living paycheck to paycheck since the COVID-19 pandemic? That's a staggering number, right? It's like walking on a financial tightrope without a safety net. Not a fun way to live, is it? But don't worry, we're not here to bring you down. Rather, we're here to talk solutions. One of those solutions could be as simple as understanding and implementing the 70-20-10 rule of personal finance. Now you might be thinking, I'm no mathematician, I don't do numbers, but trust me, this rule is as easy as pie, and not just any pie, a pie chart. This rule is all about splitting your income into three simple slices. Imagine, if you will, your income as a delicious apple pie. The largest slice, 70%, goes towards your essential expenses. That's your rent, utilities, groceries, you know, the things you can't live without. The second slice, 20%, is for your financial goals like saving for a rainy day or paying off that pesky student loan. The smallest slice, 10%, is your fun money for that concert ticket you've been eyeing or a weekend getaway. But why is this rule so important? Well, it's like a roadmap for your money. It tells you where to go and what to do, so you're not left scratching your head wondering where all your cash disappeared to at the end of the month. It's about taking control of your finances so they don't control you. However, just like any roadmap, it's not one size fits all. What works for some might not work for others. And that's okay. The beauty of personal finance is that it's personal. You get to tweak and adjust the rules to fit your lifestyle and financial goals. So, there you have it. That's the 70-20-10 rule in a nutshell. Now, if you're asking, what's this 70-20-10 rule? Hold on, we're getting there. So, the 70-20-10 rule. Sounds like a math problem, doesn't it? Well, don't worry, we're not about to dive into a calculus lesson. Instead, let's unravel this budgeting strategy that could potentially revamp your approach to personal finance. The 70-20-10 rule is quite straightforward. It's a way of dividing your income into three distinct categories. Let's break it down, shall we? First up, the big 70. This of your income is dedicated to your essential expenses. These are the must-haves, the non-negotiables. We're talking about rent or mortgage, groceries, utilities, transportation, and any other absolute essentials that keep your life running smoothly. This is the largest chunk because, well, life can be expensive. Next, we've got the 20. This fraction of your income is allocated towards your financial goals. Whether you're saving for a rainy day, paying off debt, or investing for your future, this 20% is your golden ticket to financial freedom. It's all about future-proofing yourself and ensuring that you're not living for the now, but also preparing for later. Finally, we have the fun part. The 10. This is your freedom fund, your treat-yourself money. This slice of your income is for your personal enjoyment. Want that new pair of shoes or maybe a weekend getaway? That's where this 10% comes into play. It's a reminder that while budgeting is important, enjoying the fruits of your labor is equally vital. Now you might be thinking, that's all well and good, but how rigid is this rule? The beauty of the 70-20-10 rule is its flexibility. These percentages aren't set in stone, they're starting guidelines to help you structure your finances. You can tweak and adjust them to suit your personal circumstances and financial goals. So, that's the 70-20-10 rule in a nutshell. But how does it work in real life? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the practical application of this intriguing financial strategy. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more financial tips and tricks. Let's imagine you earn a grand, a cool $1,000. Here's how you divide it using the 70-20-10 rule. First you take 70% of that, which is $700. This is your living expenses pocket. It goes to the essentials, the things you absolutely can't do without. Think rent or mortgage, utilities, groceries and transportation. The bare necessities, the simple bare necessities as the song goes, Next you take 20% or $200 and put it towards your financial goals. These aren't just your pie-in-the-sky dreams but tangible targets you're aiming for. This could include paying off debt, saving for retirement or building an emergency fund. Essentially, this is your future you fund. It's a way of making sure that you're not just living for today but also planning for tomorrow. Finally, you take the remaining 10% or $100 and this is your fun money. This is for your personal freedom expenses. It's the cash you can spend on whatever you like, no questions asked. Want that new video game? Save up your 10%. Fancy a meal out at that new restaurant? That's what your 10% is for. So, to recap, out of your $1,000, you're spending $700 on essentials, $200 on your financial goals, and $100 on yourself. It's a simple, straightforward way of managing your money and ensuring you're covering all bases, today's needs, future plans, and personal enjoyment. 
Now this might sound like the perfect solution to all your budgeting woes, but like anything in life, it's not always that simple. The 70-20-10 rule is a great starting point, but it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. And that's the 70-20-10 rule in action. But is it all sunshine and rainbows? Like everything else in life, the 70-20-10 rule isn't perfect. Let's take a moment to delve into the pros and cons of this budgeting strategy, shall we? On the sunny side of the street, we have simplicity. The rule is as straightforward as a ruler, making it a breeze for anyone to grasp. It's a balanced approach too, encouraging you to spread your resources across your needs, goals, and yes, even your want to have a good time expenses. It's like a financial diet that still allows for dessert, and let's not forget flexibility. The percentages can be adjusted depending on your unique circumstances and priorities. Got high debt? You might want to up your financial goals percentage a notch or two. But let's not forget to look both ways before crossing, this rule has its share of crosswalks. First off, it can be a bit of an oversimplification. It doesn't take into account individual income levels, expenses, or financial goals. One size fits all is great for baseball caps, not so much for financial planning. It also tends to neglect certain needs. Fitting all your essential expenses into the 70% category might leave you shortchanged when it comes to specific needs like healthcare or childcare. And finally, the categories might not be a true reflection of your spending habits or priorities. You might be a spendthrift who enjoys the finer things in life, or a penny pincher who prefers to save rather than splurge. Now if the 70-20-10 rule isn't your cup of tea, there are other flavors to choose from. Zero-based budgeting, for instance, allocates every last penny of your income to specific categories until it reaches zero, or the needs versus wants approach, which categorizes expenses based on necessity. And then there's the 50-30-20 rule, a variation on our star of the show, the 70-20-10 rule. It could be a better fit for those with higher living expenses. So, while the 70-20-10 rule has its merits, it may not be the magical solution for everyone. It's always important to find a budgeting strategy that fits like a glove and promotes healthy financial habits. Remember, personal finance is personal. It's not about what works for others, but what works for you. If the 70-20-10 rule doesn't fit your lifestyle, don't fret. There are other budgeting strategies you can try. Let's take a quick tour through some of these alternatives. First up, we have zero-based budgeting. This method is all about giving every single dollar of your income a job. You allocate your money to various categories until you hit zero. It's a great way to ensure full utilization of your income. Then we have the needs versus wants approach. This one's pretty straightforward. You categorize your expenses into needs like rent and food and wants, such as entertainment and dining out. It's a good way to prioritize essential spending. Lastly, we have the 50-30-20 rule. It's similar to the 70-20-10 rule but with a twist. Here, you allocate 50% to needs, 30% to wants, and 20% to financial goals. This might work better for those with higher living expenses. Remember, the best budgeting strategy is the one that works for you. In conclusion, the 70-20-10 rule is a pretty handy tool for managing your finances. It's like a financial Swiss army knife, offering a simple, balanced, and flexible approach. But remember, it's not the only tool in the shed. It might oversimplify things, neglect certain needs, or not quite match your spending habits. So, don't be afraid to try alternatives like zero-based budgeting or the needs versus wants approach. Or maybe the 50-30-20 rule might be your cup of tea especially if you've got higher living expenses. The most crucial thing is to find a budgeting strategy that suits your individual circumstances and financial goals. After all, personal finance is, well, personal. So get out there, experiment, and find what works for you. And don't forget to talk about money with your friends. It's a conversation that can really pay off. And that's a wrap on the 70-20-10 rule. What's take on this budgeting strategy? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, do hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe our channel for more insightful content on managing your finances. Let's keep the conversation going.